I've been friends with Lakin since second grade, and anybody who has ever met her knows that she will do anything she can to help out. When something needs to get done, she takes it up and makes sure it gets done. She's the person you can always count on to have good advice or ideas, and she will go out of her way to meet new people. The first two things I learned about Lakin were that she loves Culver's and she loves the FFA just a little bit more. Since then, I've come to not only know her as my kind-hearted, hard-working, sushi-loving best friend, but also as a dependable, humble, and caring state officer who you have all gotten to know over the last year as well. Let me tell you a little something about my big sister, Lakin. First of all, she loves pickles. One thing that she, taught, that she has taught me is to always reach my goals. Lakin is someone that I want to grow up and be like. We have the best sleepovers in my dreams. So. Our friend. And my sister. Lake and Mullinex. Summertime as a kid was the absolute best. Growing up in the small town of Akron, most of my friends spent their summers the way I did mine, on the softball field. What's better than a night spent on the ball diamond, running the bases, sliding through the dirt, and celebrating with a DQ blizzard afterwards? Growing up in a town with a very successful softball team, it just seemed like everybody played. What would you do if you didn't? So summer after summer, I played from a league in Sioux City to traveling all over the area for tournaments. As I grew older, I could see my interest in the sport fading and my little sister Elena quickly catching up. She would fill in on our softball team, batting and fielding just as well as the girls who were two years older than her. She lived and breathed the sport, wanting nothing more than a summer spent on the ball diamond. Well, I began wishing I could spend my time elsewhere. The summer after fifth grade, I was at the pool with one of my only friends who wasn't in softball. I had practice later that afternoon, but I was swimming before I had to go. But since my mom was out of town and I was all by myself, and I thought I was really clever in fifth grade, I decided to skip softball practice. I didn't plan on telling my parents. I figured I'd had showered by the time my mom was home and she never had to know. So around five o'clock, I snuck through the side door in my house only to be greeted by my mom. As it turns out, she had gotten home early and came to softball practice to pick me up. I wasn't there. She sat me down and we had a long talk about why I skipped. And she told me that I didn't have to play softball anymore if I didn't want to. Though I chose to continue playing, the seasons began to drag on. By the end of the summer after seventh grade, I hated almost every minute I was playing. I rarely got on base. I was more scared of a line drive than willing to field it, and the thought of sliding through the dirt on a 90 degree day disgusted me. At that point, I knew my time on the field was over. I had accepted that I would never be good at softball if my heart wasn't in it. I was wasting my time on something that I didn't want to take any farther with me. I had finally come to the realization that if I wanted to find what I was good at, I needed to take a step back from softball and move on. So in high school, I was the kid that went out for everything. Band, choir, volleyball, basketball, speech, drama, FFA, and everything in between. During my freshman year, I, and every other green hand ever, memorized the FFA creed. Around the time that I had finished learning the creed, a woman was touring our town from Vietnam. And as a part of her tour, she came to see our ag program. My ag teacher presented me with the opportunity to give the creed to this woman. Though I was really unsure of myself, super nervous, and pretty sure I'd forget every word after I believe, I decided to take the opportunity. 
So there I stood, in front of the whole class, with this woman right in the front row. And I began with the words that everybody knows. I believe in the future of agriculture. As I continued to speak, I watched this woman's face fill with wonder. By the time I was finished, she told me how proud she was of me and how moved she was by my speech. Though, as a woman in her 50s who had lived in Vietnam her whole life, I didn't think the FFA creed would mean much to her. This was the first time I realized that my voice could have an impact. Since I didn't play sports anymore, I worked most afternoons if I wasn't at rehearsal, and since my friends were still in sports, I had to wait until at least 5.30 to see them. Though I thought my social life would be over when I stopped doing the same activities as my friends, it wasn't. I still came to their games as much as possible, and they still supported me in my contests, though none of them were in FFA. Though we weren't in the same activities, they still celebrated my successes. And after I gave the speech at our high school graduation, we walked out of the school for the last time together. You see, you can't be truly happy until you are doing the things that make you happy. You can't succeed in your passions until you let go of your distractions. Don't be a jack of all trades. Be a master of one. When you get busy and overwhelmed, take a step back. Why are you so stressed out? Are you filling your schedule with things you don't genuinely enjoy? Are you wasting your time on activities that you're only doing because your friends are doing them? Iowa FFA, it is time to stop wasting time on distractions and begin pursuing your passions.